Time to paint aliens. Good day or night to you. Welcome to the Gaming Tome. A few months ago, I bought the game Zombicide Invader, and it is about time that I painted its miniatures. The board game pits a team of survivors against a horde of extraterrestrial monsters. In this video, I will be painting the Xenos. They are the aliens trying to stop the survivors. Xenos? I think you mean aliens. There are four types of enemy models in this board game. Workers, Hunters, Tanks, and the Abomination. They share some features, but have drastically different shapes and sizes. We can see that each of the Xenos have tentacles, but the location and quantity of these vary from type to type. The workers are the grunts of the alien horde, and have the closest resemblance to a humanoid body. The hunters are the fast ones. The tanks are the big meat shields of the horde. The abomination is the biggest and baddest of the Xenos, and is just gonna crush everything in its way. These alien models are quite diverse from each other. They each play their own special role in driving away the pesky humans. The game's artwork depicts these hauntingly terrifying creatures with a dark color scheme. The artwork for the Abomination has white or light gray skin that is more in line with what I want. This board game comes with a lot of these miniatures, and I want a little variety. I've come up with two variants of the color scheme I plan to use. I primed and painted a base coat on the models ahead of time. Half of them got a light gray coat. The other half got a sort of eggshell yellow color. The majority of their skin will be these colors. I have more plans for painting the skin, but those can wait for now. The tentacles are a prominent part of these models. The game artwork has some of the tentacles colored red or peachy flesh colors, which reminds me of an octopus or squid. An elephant trunk comes to mind when I look at the dark color of the large tentacles on the tank. These are good color choices, but I will be swapping them around for my minis. I will be painting most of the tentacles that peachy flesh color. I want the mouths to have a weirder color scheme. The idea of a black oily mouth stuck with me as being totally alien, so I am using black paint for the tongues of the hunters and the mouth tentacles of the tanks. Each type of alien seems to have their own assortment of tentacles. The workers only have them around their heads. This kind of looks like Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. The hunters have a long tongue and two tentacles projecting from both sides of their mouth. The tank's mouths are a full-on beard of tentacles. There are a few bumps on these mouth tentacles that could be suckers or teeth. I would paint these as teeth if I was not already going for solid black. The tanks also have four larger tentacles that emerge from a hunch in their upper backs. For the most part, they wrap around the back of the creature's arms. I have to be careful to keep this paint on the tentacles and off of the arms. Take note of the bumpy teeth. I will return to paint these later. Many of these tentacles have a distinct or obscured edge where they connect to the model, but the cheek tentacles on the hunters merge into the neck and shoulders. It would probably look better if I blend the peach into the pale skin for this feature. There are multiple ways to blend colors. An airbrush would probably be the most consistent way to accomplish this. I am going to blend these with a paintbrush. This spot at the base of the tentacle is where the gradient from the skin to the pink tentacle will be created. I am using a combination of dry brushing and paint thinned with water to color this transition zone. 
Next, I painted the rest of the tentacle solid peach. Now I return with a little paint and water to touch up the edge of the solid peach. Luckily, there is not a lot of contrast between the light gray, eggshell, and the peach color. Now let's give these creatures some skin coloration. This is where the other factor to my color scheme variance comes in. The gray Xenos will have red skin reaching up their arms and legs from their hands and feet. The eggshell Xenos will have a green version of the same pattern. I originally pictured a gradient blend of these colors on their forearms and lower legs, but I decided on just simple sharp edges to the coloration. I tried to make each limb pattern end in three triangular points. This is easy on the workers and hunters. The tanks are a bit harder because they have tentacles around their arms and this sagging blobby mass that obscures part of their legs. I imagined the Xenos to have frog-like skin. The hairless, betentacled bodies of these aliens gives me the impression that they could be aquatic or amphibious. The next color up is gray. If you look close, you will notice small pores at certain spots on these models. I want to give them some color. I lightly dot some gray over each of these pores. In hindsight, I could have and probably should have painted them peach. The workers have them on their shoulders and upper back. The hunters have one or two pores on each of their cheek tentacles. The tanks have them on the front and back of their lower torso. Before I forget, the hunters have one foot on a rock that needs to be painted. I could have painted it a more Martian orange, but I just cannot picture these aliens on a place like Mars. That rock and the structure on the back of the tanks are the main targets for this gray paint. The back half of the head has this texture that seems to indicate a thin skin covering the creature's brain. Maybe the back of the head is the weak spot for the tank. The shape on the back has multiple layers, some of which have a ribbed appearance. I wonder if these are gills or some sort of air filter. Now it's time to paint the bones and teeth. The tanks appear to have a bone exoskeleton over their faces. It is freaky. I love it and will paint the workers and hunters a similar way. Is it just me? Are these aliens starting to vaguely resemble clowns? The tips of the hunter cheek tentacles have a sharp stinger or tooth. I am painting it to resemble bone. It would also look cool painted black. The teeth in the hunter's mouth also should get some paint. Remember those teeth on the large tentacles earlier? It is time to paint those. I really like this detail. Some of these teeth are aligned to form a serrated edge, while others look like they're meant to pierce and hold prey. All three of these types of Xenos have clawed fingers and toes. These nails will get a bone color too. The tanks have particularly long claws on their hands. The tanks and workers have these little bumps on parts of their bodies. In the artwork, they look like small black horns or barbs. I'm just going to paint them like bone spikes. These models are just about done. It is easy to forget to paint some of these bone features. I had to go back to paint some of the claws a few times. I'm using a soft black wash that I made using Lester Bursley's wash recipe. 
I will put a link to Mr. Bursley's recipe in the description. Washes are meant to provide artificial shading by pooling in a model's details, but they will darken every surface they are applied to. This is much more noticeable and possibly undesirable over light colored paints. This wash is a bit low on pigment. It seems to be dark enough to simulate shading and minor grime, but not overpowering on this pale skin. I finish them off by coating their bases black a few hours later. You may be wondering, what about that big alien? I do not have footage of painting it because I actually painted it a few months ago. This is the spoiler abomination. I use this mini to practice wet blending. It was also a test run of what colors I might try on the rest of the Xenos. This beast is the boss of the Zombicide Invader enemies, so I am fine with him having a paint job that is unique from the rest. I gave the Abomination gray skin that blends to blue at the hands and feet. I think the wet blending came out really well on this big guy. This took quite a while to pull off. A little more practice will make this process faster. I struggled with the tentacles on this model. I tried the pink flesh color but wanted something more alien. I tried purple and it was too much. Cream colored tentacles is what I ended up with. I imagine they are pale from lack of sunlight. I wish I tried painting the tentacles a drab brown. The Abomination's arm tentacles look leathery in the artwork, and that appearance is growing on me. There are three faceted nodules across the front and back of the creature. The artwork makes them look like they are glowing gems. I tried painting them various colors, but ended up believing they made the model look too busy. In the end, I painted them like mutated bone growths. This creature's skin is peeling back with these sort of lips around the waist and upper legs to reveal a mass of barnacle-like pores. The board game rules describe this creature as leaving a massive mold growth in its wake. Perhaps these barnacle things spew out the mold or mold spores. Paint this section darker than the rest of the skin, otherwise it'll look like this behemoth is wearing a diaper. The mold lore about the spoiler abomination inspired me to give it a coat of dirty brown wash. This thing is probably friends with the Otiug from D&D. They both have a tendency to be surrounded by filth. Overall, I think I could have done better painting the abomination, but I am happy with what I have accomplished. The Xenos are all done. I feel like most of the time I am painting models with darker paints, so I am glad that I got to try out a lighter color scheme on this project. I am also happy that I was able to implement the skin coloration pattern on their hands and feet. I have been thinking this would look cool on an alien creature for a while now. These were fun to paint and I want to see what they would look like with different colors. Maybe down the road I'll pick up some more. Tell me what you think about these models. Do they look like a bloodthirsty horde of alien octopus men, or do they look like a spooky crew of extraterrestrial clowns? In the meantime, I need to practice wet blending paint. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then brush those tentacles out of the way so you can press that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, keep making, and keep playing. Have a good one.
All right, let's be honest here. It looks like a ball sack.